Hello, everyone. Thank you for calling in today. Uh, today, I will be presenting to you the new DNA encoded chemical library kit. This is a brand new product that has been released by Genscript. Um, with you today, my name is Ruben Ajar. I am the product manager for gene editing and molecular biology products at Genscript, and I'm actually very excited to be presenting this product to you today. So Genscript, a quick overview of the company. Um, we have a global footprint. We've been um, We've been in business for approximately 20 years. And as you can see, the progression, we started in New Jersey and we have grown um, fairly significantly throughout the world. Uh, and as of last year, we actually developed the brand new kit that you are hearing about today. So the DNA encoded chemical library kit, or for short, what we are calling it, the Gen Decal kit, is based on the DEL technology, which is uh, taking chemical compounds and tagging them with DNA barcodes to enable high throughput screening. So through this, uh, what you see on, your, on the right hand side, which is taking the chemical compounds, linking them with DNA barcodes that are unique, it enables identification of these specific chemical compounds, which enables very high throughput parallel screening. So basically a single test tube would, would contain millions and millions of compounds that typically are uh, screened uh, in spatial grids. It is no longer the case with this new uh, technology. So there was a Nature Review article that I'm referencing up here on the slide that spoke about how much money this, this new technology has uh, saved for people that are working on drug development. So in a conventional high throughput screening uh, for a million compounds, the typical compound costs about $1,100 per compound, uh, which roughly equates to $4 million to $2 billion. So this is how much uh, upfront um, money a drug uh, company would have to um, invest in to, to do this initial screening. However, with the new DNA encoded library, uh, approximately the cost per compound is reduced to less than two cents. So it typically costs approximately $150,000 to create and screen such compounds. Uh, however, if you were to use an off-the-shelf solution such as the Genscript kit, the $150,000 are actually reduced even further. Uh, and um, a lot of the labor, a lot of the time that uh, goes into developing this kit or and then a lot of the expertise that you have to build. Um, it's basically provided to you by using this new kit. So I have a quick quote from one of the people that is instrumental in developing this technology. Basically what he said is that it is possible now for academics and some of these smaller lo laboratories to access compounds that uh, was a huge struggle for pharmaceutical companies, the giant drug companies, to develop for fair many, many years. Also, what you see in front of you is um, the progression of the technology all the way from the 1990s, where it was originally developed. Uh, what you see is that it took approximately uh, maybe 10 years or so before the DEL technology was really adopted, but from the early 2000s up until now, there's been um, a huge progression in the technology. There's been a lot of adopters and people that have um, jumped on board and expanded the technology further. Uh, so almost all of the large drug pharmaceuticals out there have actually adopted this kit and um, this technology. And this is where uh, Genscript uh, uh, enabled uh, this technology further by providing an off-the-shelf kit. Typically, what impacts the DEL uh, technology uh, are two main things. One is the chemical diversity of the actual compound structures, and the second is the data analytics. So for the first one, uh, typically uh, what you see is there's a specific library size that is very suitable, very optimal when you're doing a screen. You Approximately uh, a million compounds to a billion are very good. Uh, anything more typically becomes uh, too challenging because there's too much background noise. If there's 
um, interactions between molecules that aren't very strong, you end up losing them with the screen because there's just too much compounds, there's too much happening in one tube. The other component, which is very important, is the structural diversity of these chemical compounds. So what you want to see is linear and spherical core structures, uh, which is what the Gendical kit is based off of. And the last point that I have up there is the coverage of drug-like candidates. So what you want to see in a chemical library is, is good coverage of drug-like candidates, which I will speak about in a minute. The other aspect of uh, the impacting factors is the data analytics. So whenever you're looking at a sequence of a chemical molecule that was identified as a hit, uh, you want to have the expertise to be able to characterize the molecules that were identified as a hit. So the wonderful part about the Gendical kit is that the analytical aspect is actually provided to the scientist free of charge. So what you, what you see on the right hand side, the data analytics, this is something that JavaScript will be providing free of charge. So once you have a sequence that was identified as a hit, um, we will be able to characterize those hits based on the enrichment value, not based on just the sequencing. This means that we will be able our team will be able to identify any sequencing bias that would be generated uh, by conventional high throughput sequencing. The other data analytics aspect that is also very important is not to simply look at the enrichment point. Um, if you were to do that on, a, on an expertise level, um, you would be introducing or you wouldn't be uh, identifying the false positives which is very, very important because you want to reduce the amount of hits that aren't necessarily uh, a true hit. This will reduce um, the cost down the line. So the way that we do it is actually by looking at the structural activity relationship. And I do have a case study that I will talk about a little bit later on, um, but this is very, very um, important when you're doing uh, data analytics of the identified hits in the chemical screening. So what the GenScript kit is providing you with is that it is completely accessible off the shelf. What you're going to get is a single tube that contains all of the DNA encoded chemical libraries. Um, the, uh, the kit is actually very affordable and it is ready to use. So you, once you obtain the kit, you can go ahead and conduct your screening right away. The library consists of a collection of 18 sub libraries, and I can talk about that in a minute as well and a total of 400 million diverse molecules. And the last component of what you're, what I have up there is that the hit analysis is going to be, be performed for you and provided to you by an industry leader. So what you have in front of you is the protocol of how a screening is conducted using the Gendical. So the first step is to take the protein of interest or your target of interest and immobilize it on a magnetic beat. So um, uh, you are able to pick any kind of affinity, um, a beat that you are interested in. Um, we won't limit you to that as long as it's a good, um, a good um, binding uh, molecule and it's gonna hold your protein of interest. That way you can conduct your screening effectively. Once you have your protein of interest immobilized on this magnetic bead, you are going to add your Gendical library and incubate it with your immobilized protein. This will enable the, the, um, the, um, uh, the actual screening and for the hit compounds to bind to your, to your uh, protein of interest. So you need to allow for that um, in, a, in a, a specific environment. That way you get that bound protein. Once your protein is bound, which is what you see um, in between number three and number four, um, you're going to go ahead and wash away any unbound compounds, the Gendical compounds that did not bind. So whatever is bound is your HIT compound, and you're going to go ahead and amplify the DNA barcode, which is tagging your chemical compound that has bound to your protein of interest, and go through high throughput screening. 
once you have conducted your high throughput screening, you're going to provide Gen, uh, GenScript with the data and the um, scientist that has um, the expertise that I mentioned earlier is going to prepare a report for you and will be provided to you. One thing to note is that you will not be sharing your protein of interest with us. So everything that is on what you see up here is actually proprietary to you. We will not get visibility to that. What we will get visibility to is the DNA barcode tag uh, sequence, which will enable us to provide you with the report that I mentioned. So what you have in front of you here is actually the 18 chemical sublibraries that the Gendical is built on. Uh, and uh, you see that there's a breakdown of the library size. That's for the next three slides. One thing to know as well is there's a DNA control, um, which is actually very important because it will also enable us to do um, uh, so our own analysis to make sure that you got a good hit. So the chemical library structures that I mentioned um, in the four slides before, um, they're actually broken down into a few different uh, structures. You have your linear, your scaffold, and your macrocycle. And what you're going to see with the Gendica library kit is that you have a little bit of linear, you have a little bit of microcycle, but the majority of the kit is based off of a scaffold structures, which is actually what you want. So basically, the molecules are developed in such a manner or built in such a manner that they are overlaid with one another. And this is what gives the kit the diversity and the drug-like molecule structures that you want to see in the Gendical kit. Uh, so one of our team members actually developed uh, a quick analysis, not quick, um, but they developed an analysis to analyze the chemical properties and the physical properties of the molecules. And what we were able to identify is that the Gendical kit by taking a thousand molecules from this kit um, is actually fits into the Lipsky's rule of five. So the Lipsky's rule of five is actually, um, um, uh, it's, it's basically uh, based off of the, uh, the orally um, and um, um, drug viable molecules uh, in the industry. Um, basically, the rule um, talks about how um, the absorption and permeation of specific drug molecules fit into this rule. So the majority of them, um, these drug candidates that are considered good for or oral availability is, is based off of these physical properties that you see up here. So what you see up here is that the majority of the GenScript uh, um, molecules actually fit within this graph. Another analysis that was conducted by our team is that we took the 18 Gendica libraries uh, and we overlaid them with the drug bank um, released uh, uh, molecules. And what you see is that there was actually an overlap of over 98%. So um, it, it's actually uh, basically what you want to see. You want to be screening your protein of interest or your target of interest against drug-like molecules that would mimic these structures. So over 80% overlap is exactly what you want to see, where there's a little bit of uh, uniqueness and the majority of the kit is actually very much in line with the drug bank. Uh, we were also able to conduct another case study. The case study that you see up here um, shows uh, a specific um, protein that was identified as a hit. Um, so I'm going to try to zoom in here. So there's the Gendical kit number two, Gendical kit number four, and then the kit number three and kit number five that I have showing as a case study. So the hits that you see down here, which is, which is the spatial grid that you see in front of you, um, showed uh, basically um, this cubic MAC, it, it indicates that there is an enrichment service of these molecules that are sharing these building blocks. So uh, these molecules that were identified as a hit uh, are actually what, what bound to your compound of interest. 
And what you see on your left hand side is the hits that were identified by the Gendical. So this is actually, uh, oops, this is actually um, very much in line with a, um, a hit that was identified by JSK. And I cited their article down here, which is which was um, very similar in structure to the um, the hit that was identified by the Gendical. So it was definitely uh, an indication of the success of the kit. So um, basically what I mentioned earlier with regarding to the structural um, similarities in the building blocks um, that we were able to parse up using the um, the analytics that our team has developed and has has the ability to identify. Um, this is what you see. Up here, you do see some molecules that are actually uh, were considered a hit if you were to just to look at the sequence data. However, by looking at the um, at the cubic map, you see that there's really no clustering or crumping of these um, building blocks or where there's a spatial grid that you're showing that these molecules are clustered together. This is actually an indication of a false positive. This means that even though these these molecules that are shown as a hit um, by looking at this specific um, sequence data, however, by laying it out on a spatial grid and showing the side by side analysis, um, for the building blocks and the, and the different structure and similarities of the hits, you see that this is actually not a true hit. So by, by using our expertise and our ability to do this analysis a little bit deeper, we, we can parse out the, pro, the, the hits that aren't necessarily uh, what you want to see. Also, here's another example of a false positive hit or a potential hit that might be investigated a little bit further, uh, which is this molecule um, that also showed a high enrichment value. Uh, however, um, the compounds adjacent to it um, showed a slightly lower enrichment value, um, and they could potentially be something that's a hit, but they don't look very promising. So we can potentially flag them and provide them in the report. However, they're not very strong hits. Uh, and with that, I'd like to open it up to any questions that um, the attendees have. Uh, I, I, I'd love to hear from you. I left my contact information here uh, if you have any questions pertaining to the kit. The one comment I want to leave you with is that even though the kit, um, there's been a lot of development throughout the industry by different pharmaceutical companies. So if you are a pharmaceutical um, um, person that is working with DNA encoded chemical library, and you have your own kit that you've developed in-house. What I want to leave you with is that this kit would be complementary. The Gendical kit would be complementary to what you're using because every time that you develop such a kit, you're using different building blocks, you're, doing, you're using different chemical compounds, and you're structuring them and developing them in a different manner. So this kit would be complementary to what you would be using. So I, I highly encourage you to test it, to try it. Uh, we are actually looking for collaborators, as I mentioned earlier in the presentation. This is a brand new product for us. So we'd love to grow our business uh, and collaborate with people that are interested in working with us. Um, so with that, uh, I'd love to hear from you. Contact me, feel free to do that. Uh, and I wish you a good day.